24th session of 11th Jatiya Shangshad prorogued today with leader of the House Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina calling for staying alert so that no one can play ducks and drakes with people's voting rights and democracy continuing to prevail. সকল কে সজাগ থাকার জন্য আমি আহ্বান জানাচ্ছি কোন চক্রান্তের কাছে এই বাংলাদেশের জনগণ আর মাথা নত করবে না করে নাই Prime Minister urges public representatives to earn trust and conviction of the people and move forward Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to leave Dhaka for New York on September 17 to attend 78th UN General Assembly meeting. Mujib, the making of a nation screened at Toronto International Film Festival, the Bangabandhu biopic depicts life of father of the nation along with the genocide of 1971 and brutal killings of 1975, says Dr. Hassan Mahmoud. Government fixes prices of eggs, potatoes and onions for the first time ever at monitoring to this effect to continue throughout, says Commerce Minister. Deadly flood death toll in Libya exceeds 6,000 as the UN says timely measures could reduce deaths. And Pakistan set a victory target of 253 runs for Sri Lanka in Asia Cup. Assalamu alaikum. This is News at 10 and I'm Anika Ambrain with you. Those were the highlights, now the details. Pratik Grami, Pratik Mohallai, Pratik Uniani, Pratik Sabdivisane, Awamidike Netitte, Shangram Purishad Guretolo, Ebon Tumadir Jaki Tuate, Taini Aprostu Tago. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina urged the people of the country to stay awake so that none can play games with the voting rights and hamper the ongoing progress and democratic trend of the country. She made the plea while delivering her valedictory speech at the 24th session of the 11th parliament tonight. Sheikh Hasina, also the leader of the house, said her government has been taking the country forward amid the global economic depression and inflation. The people of Bangladesh won't bow down to any conspiracy and didn't do so, she said. The Prime Minister criticised the foreign countries that are now vocal on the election issue of Bangladesh, questioning them where their spirit was during the previous faulty elections in Bangladesh. যাচ্ছে দেখি নির্বাচনের স্বচ্ছতা নিয়ে আর নির্বাচন নিয়ে সবাই খুব সচ্চর যে সমস্ত দেশ আমাদের দেশে নির্বাচন নিয়ে কথা বলছে আর অবাধ নিরপেক্ষ নির্বাচনের কথা বলছে তাদের কাছে আমার প্রশ্ন 75 সালের পর থেকে বারবার যে নির্বাচনগুলি হয়েছিল সেই সাদাতুরের হেনা ভোট বা রাষ্ট্রপতি ভোট 79 ভোট 81 নির্বাচন 86 নির্বাচন Chanobi Shalir, Pondo Febra Nirbaton, Adva Duhajar Aki Nirbaton, Shomaje, Shantashi Kormokando, Otacha Nirjaton, Sheshomai, Ottoba, Duhajar Choi Shalir J Nirbaton, Jedas, Suhasa Shate, Janote, who is Duja Nirbaturi to Bati Rejai, the Sheshomatade Chetonata Kutai Chilu, Sheshomatade Mane Amjain at the Bibikin Aradaini. আজকে যখন আওয়ামী লীগ পরপরই তিনবার নির্বাচনে সরকার এসেছে বাংলাদেশের আর্থসামাজিক উন্নতি করছে এবং আওয়ামী লীগের আমলে এ পর্যন্ত যতগুলি নির্বাচন হয়েছে প্রতিটি নির্বাচন স্বচ্ছ শান্তিপূর্ণ নির্বাচন এর থেকে বেশি শান্তিপূর্ণ কবে হয়েছে বাংলাদেশের নির্বাচন বা পৃথিবীর কোন দেশে হয়ে থাকে অনেক দেশে নির্বাচন তো এখনো তাদের বিরুদ্ধে মানেই নাই এরকম তো ঘটনা আছে that for you, Amade, Nibatoni on a Sabuk Shuntochi. October Mashe, Amra Arakta Session, Bosbe, Shetai Habe, Amade, Eshomai, Shesh, 
সেশন পরে নির্বাচন হবে নির্বাচনে যদি জনগণ ভোট দেয় আবার এদিকে আসব না দিলে ওদিকে যাব কোনো অসুবিধা নাই জনগণের উপরেই আমরা সব ছেড়ে দিচ্ছি জনগণ যেটা করবে তবে সবাইকে সতর্ক থাকতে হবে আমরা যখন অর্থনৈতিকভাবে এই সারা বিশ্বব্যাপী যখন অর্থনৈতিক মন্দা মূল্যস্ফীতি তখন যখন দেশকে এগিয়ে নিয়ে যাচ্ছি এই অগ্রযাত্রাটা যেন অব্যাহত থাকে কোনো মতেই যেন জনগণের ভোটের অধিকার নিয়ে কেউ ছিনিমিনি খেলতে না পারে গণতান্ত্রিক ধারাটা যেন ব্যাহত করতে না পারে তার জন্য দেশবাসী সহ সকলকে সজাগ থাকার জন্য আমি আহ্বান জানাচ্ছি কোনো চক্রান্তের কাছে এই বাংলাদেশের জনগণ আর মাথা নত করবে না করে নাই জাতির পিতা বলেছিলেন কেউ দাবায় রাখতে পারবে না এই বাঙালিকে আর কেউ দাবায় রাখতে পারবে না আজকে বিশ্বব্যাপী বাঙালি এই বাংলাদেশ যে মর্যাদা পেয়েছে সেই মর্যাদা অব্যাহত রেখেই আমরা এগিয়ে যাব Meanwhile, Overseas Employment and Migrants Amendment Bill 2023 was passed in the Jatiya Shamsha today with a view to bringing middlemen in international migrations account table. Expatriates Welfare and Overseas Employment Minister Imran Ahmed moved the bill, which was unanimously passed by voice votes in Shamsha with Deputy Speaker Advocate Shamsul Haq Toku in the chair. The minister said the new act will be enacted by amending Overseas Employment and Migration Act 2023, aiming to reduce the oppression and tyranny of middlemen or brokers in workforce export. Over 10 million migrant workers sent a record amount of $22.07 billion remittance in 2021 despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Female overseas employment has increased in recent years after the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia allowed women to migrate at free of cost under 2015 deal. Meanwhile, the Trade Organization Amendment Bill 2023 was passed today in Parliament aiming to bring some changes in the existing law. Commerce Minister Tipu Monshi moved the bill which was unanimously passed by voice votes in the House. Earlier, Industries Minister Nurul Mojid Mahmoud Humayun, in absence of the Commerce Minister, placed the bill in the Jati Ushangchud as per the proposed law in case of any problem to hold the election the existing committee of any trade organization can continue its operation for one year after expiry of its tenure in line with the draft law. On the last day of the session today, several bills have been introduced in Parliament. These are Bangladesh Institute of Management Bill 2023, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Agricultural University Shariatpur Bill 2023 and Thakur Gao University Bill 2023. The Minister of the concerned ministries presented the bills. Later, the Deputy Speaker forwarded the bills to the respective parliamentary committees for submission of examination reports. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has called upon elected representatives of the local government bodies to earn trust and confidence of the people, saying their scared, sacred responsibility is to say, serve the commoners. In this context, the vowed to turn Bangladesh into a developed, prosperous and smart country through implementing SDGs set by the UN in continuation of successfully establishing it as a developing nation. The Prime Minister was addressing a function to celebrate National Local Government Day at Gono Bhavan today. Sheikh Hasina said the public representatives elected by the votes of the common people have to work as service providers and they have responsibilities to work for the people. She mentioned that once the leaders are elected, they should work and go ahead for the welfare and the development of the people and the localities to earn their trust and confidence. Putting emphasis on keeping up the ongoing pace of progress and development, the head of the state expressed her firm conviction to advance the country to further brighten the image on the world stage. Apra Tirumulel Manus, Jonogane, Botani Bachito, Jonogane Shibu, Jonogane Kolane, Kachkora, Et Apra Amar, Shokoliri, Daito, Are E Daito, Jota Jotobe Palon Kore, Manushe Sheba Kore, Manusha Asta Bishash, Orjon Kore. আপনারা এগিয়ে যাবেন 
কারণ একবার যখন মানুষ আপনাকে ভোট দিয়েছে মানুষ যেন আবার আপনাকে ভোট দিতে পারে বা আপনাকে আপনাদেরও সেই মানুষের আস্থা বিশ্বাস অর্জন করতে হবে আর আমরাও এটা চাই যে আজকে যে উন্নয়নটা দীর্ঘ দিনের কষ্টের ফসল এটা যেন আর নষ্ট না করতে পারে কারণ ছিয়ানব্বই থেকে দু হাজার এক যতটুকু এগিয়েছিলাম আবার ওই বিএনপি জামাত জোটে পিছিয়ে দিয়েছিল দু হাজার নয় থেকে দু হাজার তেইশ বাংলাদেশের যে অগ্রযাত্রা এটা যেন অব্যাহত থাকে তা কাজী জনগণের কাছে আমার এটাই আহ্বান থাকবে যে জাতির পিতার স্বপ্নের সোনার বাংলা গড়ে তোলা স্মার্ট বাংলাদেশ করে তুলে জাতিসংঘ ঘোষিত এসডিজি সাস্টেনেবল ডেভেলপমেন্ট গোল সেরা বাস্তবায়ন করে বাংলাদেশের ভাবমূর্তি বিশ্ব দরবারে আর উচ্চ আসনে নিয়ে যে বাংলাদেশকে আমরা এগিয়ে নিয়ে যাব লাখো শহীদের রক্তের বিনিময়ে অর্জিত এই স্বাধীনতা ব্যর্থ হয় নাই ব্যর্থ হবে না আমরা ব্যর্থ হতে দেব না Chaired by Minister for Local Government and Rural Development, Tajul Islam, the function was also addressed by State Minister Shapun Bhattacharya, DSCC Mayor Barrister Fosli Nur Taposh, Rajai City Mayor A.H.M. Khairul Zaman Liton and Mayors of Khulna Silat and Narangan City Corporations. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina will leave Dhaka for New York on September 17 next to attend the 78th General Assembly of the United Nations. A high-level delegation will be accompanied by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Foreign Minister Dr. A.K. Abdul Momin said this at a press conference at the Foreign Ministry in the capital today. State Minister for Foreign Affairs Sharia Alam was present on the occasion. The Foreign Minister said Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina will address the United Nations General Assembly on September 22 next. Replying to a query about Dr. Yunus' issue, the foreign minister said still no application from abroad came seeking permission to observe the Yunus case. He said world leaders have scope to observe the case of Dr. Yunus. Professor Yunus said, he will face the case. 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 আইনটা ওনারকে মানে মেনে চলতে হবে আর শুনেছি যে একটা ফার্মকে তিনি নিয়োগ করেছেন তারা বিভিন্ন লোকরে দিয়ে সই নিয়ে আসছেন মাননীয় প্রধানমন্ত্রী বলেছেন যে তারা যদি কি করতে চান তারা এসে কেসটা লড়াই করতে পারে উই ডোন্ট নো দ্য হোল থিং অব দ্য কেস The biopic on father of the nation, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, titled Mujib Baking a Nation, has been screened in Canada's Toronto International Film Festival before its formal release. The film was produced jointly by Bangladesh and India. Prior to the screening of the film on Wednesday evening local time, Information and Broadcasting Minister Dr. Hassan Mahmoud outlined perspective and subject matter of the movie. The function was addressed by Arifin Shubho, who acted as Bangabondhu in the film, Nusrat Faria, who acted in the character of Bangabondhu's daughter, and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, scriptwriter, India's Atul Tewari, and Bangladesh's High Commissioner to Canada, Kallu Rahman. Expatriate Bangladeshis and audience from different countries lauded the making of the biopic of Father of the Nation, Bangabondhu, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Information and Broadcasting Minister Dr. Hassan Mahmoud said the life of Bangabondhu genocide in 1971 and the brutal killings in 1975 were depicted in the film. Bangladesh and Jati Rashtra Bangladesh Minimar Ketre Bangabondhu the Shangra Bangabondhu the Jati Jarna Tiyar Bangabondhu the Determination among Egulu A. Sinabar Mantine Mustafan Karahe. আজকে নতুন প্রজন্ম কিভাবে বাংলাদেশ স্বাধীন হলো সেটি জানে না বঙ্গবন্ধু কিভাবে একটি ঘুমন্ত বাঙালি জাতিকে সশস্ত্র বাঙালি জাতিতে রূপান্তরিত করে একটি প্রশিক্ষিত সেনাবাহিনীর বিরুদ্ধে জনযুদ্ধের মাধ্যমে দেশ স্বাধীন করেছেন সেটি নতুন প্রজন্ম সেভাবে জানে না এবং সবচেয়ে বড় কথা হচ্ছে পঁচাত্তরের মর্মান্তিক যে হত্যাকাণ্ড সেটি কিভাবে সংগঠিত হয়েছিল সেটি যারা হত্যা করেছে তারা দেখেছে আর যারা হত্যাকাণ্ডের শিকার হয়েছে এর বাইরে কেউ এটি জানা না দু তিনজন সাক্ষী আছে মাত্র কয়েকজন সাক্ষী আছে মাত্র যারা সেই ঘটনায় কোনো না কোনোভাবে রক্ষা পেয়েছিল সেই ঘটনাটাও সেই মর্মান্তিক ঘটনাটাও 
এখানে চিত্রায়িত করা হয়েছে যেটি দেখা অত্যন্ত কষ্টকর কিন্তু খুনিরা যে কীরকম নির্মম ছিল তারা যে কীরকম পাশান ছিল সেটি এই সিনেমাতে প্রদর্শন করা হয় সেন্সর হয়ে গেছে আমরা আশা করছি আগামী মাসে অর্থাৎ অক্টোবর মাসে যে কোনো একসময় এটি মুক্তি দেওয়ার আমরা পরিকল্পনা করছি The Ministry of Commerce for the first time in the country has fixed the prices of three agricultural producers, potato, onion and egg. Commerce Minister Tipu Monshi disclosed this at a press briefing after a review meeting on the production, demand and price situation of essential products at the Secretariat today. The minister said in line with the recommendations of the Ministry of Agriculture, the maximum retail price of potato has been fixed at 35 to 36 taka per kg while the maximum retail price of local onion at 64 to 65 taka per kg on the other hand according to the information of the ministry of fisheries and livestock the price of each egg has been fixed at 12 taka per unit apart from this the price of packaged soybean oil and loose soybean oil has been reduced by 5 taka, 269 taka and 149 taka respectively, while the price of palm oil has been reduced by 4 taka, 224 taka, he added. Tipu Munshi said the government would allow import of egg of, its, of the item is not sold in the market as per the set price. He said those responsible for the price manipulation will be punished according to law. The minister said that in order to monitor whether these agricultural products are being sold at the fixed prices, the offices of the Directorate of National Consumer Rights Protection, DNCRP, alongside the officials of the Ministry of Agriculture and the Fisheries of Livestock will work in the field to, in addition to the concerned district and Upuzila administrations. Commerce Minister Tipu Munshi has said the prices of many products including potatoes, onions and eggs have been hiked in markets without any reason. He has warned to, to stern action against those who manipulate the prices of these goods. The minister was speaking at a function to inaugurate the sale of trading corporation of Bangladesh TCB's products in the capital's Kamarbari TNT ground today. One crore cardholder families from low-income people across the country will get oil, lentil, rice and sugar at subsidized prices. One kilogram of sugar has been included in the product list this month. A cardholder can buy a maximum 5 kilograms of rice, 2 kilograms of lentil, 2 liters of soybean oil and 1 kilogram of sugar for a total of taka. For 540. There is no symptom of improvement in the dengue situation across the country as over 2,000 have been infected and 11 died during last 24 hours. The press release of the Director General of Health Services said among the dead, six were in Dhaka and five were outside Dhaka. 2,663 dengue patients were admitted to different hospitals across the country yesterday. Among them, 900 dengue patients were hospitalized in Dhaka City and 1,763 patients outside Dhaka. Meanwhile, no one died of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. The country reported 11 COVID-19 positive cases as 1,071 tested in the last 24 hours. Corona infection rate was reported at 1.03%. Now, international news. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said it is in the interest of everybody to have a global compromise. Guterres made the remarks at a press conference held ahead of the high-level week of the 78th session of the UN General Assembly. Beginning on September 18, world leaders and delegates will gather at the United Nations headquarters in New York to participate in a series of high-level meetings and events. My appeal to world leaders will be clear, Guterres said, this is not a time for posturing or 
positioning. This is not a time for indifference or indecision. This is a time to come together for real practical solutions. It is a time for compromise for a better tomorrow. Politics is compromise, diplomacy is compromise, effective leadership is compromise, he added. Kitur said uh, the world leaders are gathering at a time when humanity faces huge challenges from the worsening climate emergency to escalating conflicts, the global cost of living crisis, soaring inequalities and dramatic technological disruptions. The UN's World Meteorological Organization says most of the thousands of deaths in the Libya floods could have been avoided. Warnings should have been issued leading to evacuations and we could have avoided most of the human casualties, it said. Meanwhile, the mayor of the eastern city of Derna estimates between 18,000 and 20,000 people have died. Residents of the devastated Libyan city of Derna desperately searched for missing relatives as rescue workers appealed for more body bags after a catastrophic flood that killed thousands of people and swept many out to sea. Swathes of the Mediterranean city were obliterated by a torrent of water unleashed by a powerful storm that swept down a usually dry riverbed on Sunday night, bursting dams above the city. Multi-story buildings collapsed with sleeping families inside. U.S. President Joe Biden said he was not focused on an impeachment inquiry announced a day earlier but by Republican lawmakers as the White House blasted baseless allegations of wrongdoing. I don't know quite why, but they just knew they wanted to impeach me, Biden said of the Republican effort. I get up every day not focused on impeachment. I've got a job to do. I've got to deal with the issues that affect the American people every single solitary day, he told attendees at a private campaign fundraiser. The 80-year-old Democrat's brief remarks were his first Republic public comments on, on the issue of since House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, the top Republican in Congress bowed to intense pressure from the party's hard right and authorized the impeachment inquiry on Tuesday. The UN Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the growing US geopolitical competition with Russia and China marks the end of the post Cold War war order. Speaking at the Johns Hopkins University's School of Advanced International Studies, Blinken said Decades of relative geopolitical stability have given way to an intensifying competition with authoritarian powers, revisionist powers. The Secretary of State claimed that the Russian special military operation in Ukraine is the most immediate, the most acu acute threat to the international order. Beijing and Moscow are working together to make the world safer for autocracies, Blinken claimed. Thus, Blinken said the world is experiencing a pivotal moment. One era ends and another one begins. He opined that the decision that will be made now will shape the future for decades. Japan warned against violating UN resolutions on arms deals with North Korea after Russian President Vladimir Putin met with Kim Jong-un. Japan's new foreign minister, Yoko Kamikawa, told reporters we are watching the talks with concerns, including the possibility that it could lead to violations of the Security Council's ban on all arms-related material transactions with North Korea. There has been widespread speculations that Putin is seeking arms from North Korea to use in his country's war in Ukraine. Kimikawa said that the Russian invasion of Ukraine cannot be accepted. She ad added, Japan has urged the parties not to provide support to Russian forces. We are watching related activities with concerns. Now some other international news in brief. 
UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres will discuss the renewal of the grain deal with the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, as well as with presidents of Turkey and Ukraine, Tayyip Erdogan and Vladimir Zelensky next year. Ukraine says it has destroyed a sophisticated Russian air defensive system in, in occupied Crimea, Kyiv's security service, SBU, and Navy carried out the attack on a Russian faculty near Yevporita using cruise missiles and drones. Taiwan has said China flew 68 military aircraft and sent 10 Navy vessels into areas around the self-ruled island in what appeared to be a second day of military training dr drills led by the Shandong aircraft carrier. Nigeria has been hit by widespread power cuts following a total system coll collapse. Electricity distribution companies say Nigeria's erratic power grid forces households and business to use diesel and petrol generators. The ancient tower of Hercules in Karuna is one of the most well-preserved large houses remaining from the classical Roman age and it is also the only one still in use. According to legend, the tower is the site of one of the twelve labors of Hercules in Greek mythology where he defeated a fearsome three-bodied giant named Gerion. Planning Minister M. A. Manan called upon the Commonwealth states to increase investment in various sectors in Bangladesh, including medicines and RMG. He made the call while addressing a session titled Commonwealth Ministerial Panel Attracting Investment Commonwealth Expertise on the second day of the Commonwealth Trade and Investment Development Forum in the capital. Bangladesh Investment Development Authority, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and ZI Foundation jointly organized the event. The function was also addressed by Cameroon Finance Minister Louis Paul Motes, Tago's Investment Minister Rose K. Mivedor, Tavulas Fisheries and Trade Minister Motions Thaisi, Uganda's Trade. Industry and Cooperative Minister Francis Mebusax, Bangladesh Investment Development Authority Executive Chairman Lokman Hossein Mia, Executive Chairman of Bangladesh Economic Zone Authority Sheikh Yusuf Harun. Experts at a seminar observed that Bangladesh has huge opportunities to expand trade and investment collaboration with West African country Togo. They made the observation at the seminar on Roadshow on Business Opportunities in Togo held at a hotel in Dhaka today. The Export Promotion Bureau, EPB, and the Arise, a renowned developer and operator of the world-class industrial ecosystems in Africa, organized the event at the sideline of the Commonwealth Trade and Investment Forum 2023. This event aims to provide insights into the untapped business opportunities in West Africa with a particular focus on Togo. Togolese Republic Investment Promotion Minister Rose Kai Mevador, advisor to the Ministry of Investment Promotion of the Togolese Republic, Rodrigo Aku Atsa, EPB Vice President A.H.M. Asan and EPB Director General Mahabubur Rahman, among others, spoke on the occasion. Rose Kai Mevador said, as an active member of the Commonwealth, Togo is firmly committed to strengthening these ties and creating an environment conducive to investment. Now, weather. The low over Northwest Bay and adjoining West Central Bay has intensified into a well-marked low over Northwest Bay of North Orisha West Bengal coast. Met Office said under its influence, quality weather may affect the maritime ports, North Bay and adjoining coastal areas of Bangladesh. Maritime ports of Chattogram, Cox's Bazar, Mongla and Paira have been advised to keep hoisted local caution with signal number three. I repeat, signal number three. All fishing boats and trawlers over North Bay have been advised to remain 
close to the coast and proceed with caution till further notice. Meanwhile, Met Office in its weather forecast till 6 p.m. tomorrow said light to moderate rain or thunder showers accompanied by temporary gust of wind is likely to occur at many places over Dhaka, Khulna, Borishal and Chotogram divisions and at one or two places over Rangpur, Rajshahi, Memesing and Solar divisions. Besides moderately heavy to heavy falls likely to occur at places over southern parts of the country. Now news on sports. Pakistan set a victory target of 253 runs for Sri Lanka in the rain-interrupted Asia Cup Super 4 match in Colombo. Pakistan won the toss and decided to bat first. They scored 252 runs for seven wickets in the curtailed 42-overs match. Mohammad Rizwan was unbeaten 86 and Abdullah Shafiq scored 52 runs for Pakistan. Earlier, the match was scheduled to start at 3.30 p.m. Bangladesh Standard Time. But due to rain, it started after about two hours and five overs were cut down. After that, eight overs were cut down per innings while the match was stopped due to rain for the second time. To end the bulletin headlines once again. 21st session of 11 Jatiya Shangshad prorogued today with leader of the House Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina calling for staying alert so that no one can play ducks and drakes with people's voting rights and democratic continues prevails. Prime Minister urges public representatives to earn trust and conviction of the people and move forward. Prime Minister Sheikh is in to leave Dhaka for New York on September 17 to attend 78th UN General Assembly meeting. Moji, the making of a nation, screened at Toronto International Film Festival. The Bangabal Dubai picture depicts life of father of the nation along with the genocide of 1971 and brutal killings of 1975, says Dr. Hassan Mahmoud. Government fixes price of eggs, potatoes and onions for the first time ever as monitoring to the effect to continue throughout, says Commerce Minister. Deadly flood death toll in Libya exceeds 6,000 as the UN says timely measures could reduce deaths. And Pakistan set a victory target of 253 runs for Sri Lanka in Asia Cup. And that's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for staying with us. And